Okay, this is the second part of the lecture for section 5.2 using the angle addition formulas. So example eight says, if sine of alpha equals four fifths and cosine of beta equals eight over 17 for a second quadrant angle alpha and a fourth quadrant angle beta, find the following. So before we get started, let's draw those triangles out. I'm going to draw two different triangles because alpha is in the second quadrant and beta is in the fourth quadrant. So we could put them on the same coordinate axes. Why not? So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And let's see. So alpha is in the second quadrant. So I'll draw a triangle here. This is alpha, and I'm told that sine of alpha equals four over five. So that means the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse is four and five. And then this is a special triangle, three, four, five. This side here, I'm gonna label negative three, right? Since the X values are negative in quadrant two. And then beta is in the fourth quadrant. So I'll draw some triangle over here for beta. Okay, here's beta. And what did they tell me about beta? Here we go. Cosine of beta is eight over 17. So the adjacent side is gonna be eight. The hypotenuse is 17. Maybe you need to do the Pythagorean theorem or maybe you remember this is another special triangle, eight, 15, 17. But don't forget, I have to label this side negative 15 since Y values are negative there in quadrant four. Okay, great. So now we're just going to directly apply the angle addition formulas. First one for um, part A is sine of alpha minus beta. So if I use the angle addition formula, it's going to be sine alpha cosine beta. And then remember for sine, you keep the same sign. So it's going to be minus cosine alpha sine beta. And then now I'm just going to use the triangles to help me fill in all the values. Okay. So sine of alpha, that was actually given to me, that's four fifths. Cosine beta, that was also given to me, that's eight over 17. Minus, now here I'm gonna have to use the triangle, okay? So cosine alpha, come to the alpha triangle. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's gonna be negative three over five. And then sine of beta, I'm going to come to the beta triangle over here, over here. And so sine of beta is going to be the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be negative 15 over 17. All right. And then from here, we just clean things up. So when we're multiplying fractions, remember, you multiply across in the numerator and multiply across in the denominator. So that's gonna be 32 over 85 minus, and then I have a negative three times a negative 15, so that's gonna make it positive 45 over 85. And the nice thing is I already have a common denominator. So that means I just get to subtract the numerators, keep the denominator, leave it alone. 32 minus 45, that's negative 13. So that's our answer right there. So we were able to evaluate sine of alpha minus beta, but we never computed what alpha or beta were exactly, right? No big deal. We use the triangles. Okay, example B, cosine of alpha plus beta. So let's first write out the cosine angle addition formula. It's cosine alpha, cosine beta. Remember, it goes cos, cos, and then sine, sine, but you switch the sine. So minus sine alpha, sine beta. And then we're gonna come through and fill in everything. So cosine alpha, you're gonna to go to your alpha triangle, this one here. Okay, cosine's gonna be the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So that's negative three over five, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. And then times cosine beta, that one's given, eight over 17. Minus sine of alpha, that was given, four over five. And then sine of beta, again, I'm going to use the other triangle, the beta triangle. So sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 15 over 17. Lovely. So then again, multiply across the numerator, negative 24 over 5 times 17, that's 85. 
And then here I have minus, but then a negative 15 times 4 is also going to give me a negative 60. So this is going to be plus 60 over 85. And then the denominator is already the same, so it's going to remain 85. Negative 24 plus 60, that's 36. Okay, and then nothing reduces, so that's it. We leave it alone, box your answer. All right, and we're done with cosine alpha plus beta. Okay, last one here, we need tangent of alpha plus beta. So remember the formula for tangent. In the numerator, it looks like you just distribute across, so tangent alpha plus tangent beta over, it's always one, and then opposite of the sign, so minus, and then multiply them here, tangent alpha times tangent beta, okay? So let's see here, tangent of alpha, that's gonna be opposite over adjacent, so that's negative four thirds, plus tangent of beta, opposite over adjacent is gonna be negative 15 over eight, over, 1 minus negative 4 thirds times negative 15 over 8. It's the same two values here that you have in the numerator, right? Okay. Now from here, I have a complex fraction, right? So let me clean up one more step and then we'll talk about how to simplify. So we have negative 4 thirds minus 15 over 8 over, this is 1 minus 60 over 24. Now you have two choices. You can get a common denominator in the numerator, get a common denominator in the denominator, and then add and subtract, and then do your division. Or what I like to do is just multiply everything through by the LCD of the entire expression. In that case, it would be 24. So I'm going to multiply by 24 in the numerator, 24 in the denominator. That's legal, right? I'm just multiplying by 1, 24 over 24. And then now I'm going to distribute, and it'll clear all the fractions out. So I won't have a complex fraction anymore. So look here. When I distribute the 24 to negative 4 thirds, right, um, this 3 is going to cancel. So now I'm just going to have an 8. So I have negative 4 times 8. That's going to be a negative 32. Minus, and then when I distribute now, here to the 15 over 8, and it's negative, then the 8 and the 24 reduce, and I'm just left with 3. 3 times 15, that's going to be 45. Over, and then now distribute down here. So 24 times 1, that's just 24 minus 60. Okay, if you hated it, you don't have to do it this way, but I think it's the cleanest way. And so negative 32 minus 45, that's negative 77. 24 minus 60, that's negative 36. So this gives us 77 over 36. All right. So not too bad. As long as you set up your triangles um, and you have to memorize those formulas, then you should be in business. Okay. Last two examples. Verify that each equation is an identity. So we know it's a true statement. These are identities. Your job is to show how you get from one side to the other side. So the nice thing is we are not left in the lurch. Basically, if we use the appropriate angle addition formulas, these tend to work themselves out. So let's start with the messier side, the side where I see I can use an angle addition formula. Let's start with the left-hand side, okay? And I'm going to rewrite it exactly the way it is first. So I have sine of x plus y over uh, sine of x cosine of y and work vertically okay so rewrite equals every single time now in the numerator I'm gonna write the sine angle addi addition formula so sine of x plus y is sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y over sine x cosine y okay and it's not a bad idea take a peek at where you're trying to end up and I have two terms here. And notice I have two terms in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write each of them separately over the denominator. And then things are just going to work out. So I'm going to write sine x cosine y over the denominator, which is sine x cosine y. Ooh, do you see where this is going? Plus cosine x sine y over sine x cosine y. All right. And basically we're home free. 
because this first term, that's one plus, and then notice here, so this is my cotangent of x, and then sine y over cosine y, that's my tangent of y. Boom. And then finish it off by saying, oh, look, we ended up with the right-hand side. Okay. Beautiful. I think you guys will find these a lot easier than just the um, typical identities that we have to prove. Okay, next example, cosine of u plus v plus cosine of u minus v equals 2 cosine u cosine v. So let's start with the left-hand side because we can apply the angle addition and subtraction formulas. So starting with the left-hand side, okay, let's rewrite it exactly the way it is. So we have cosine of u plus v plus cosine of u minus v. Well, there isn't much to do other than to replace each of these expressions with their appropriate formula. So this is going to be cos u cos v, remember switch the sign, minus sine u sine v. So this, let's, this is here, plus, and then now I'm going to replace cosine u minus v with the appropriate formula here. Okay, let's scoot over. So we'll have cos u cos v, now switch the sign, plus sine u, sine v. Okay, now do you notice anything? I am seeing that we have a negative sine u, sine v, and a positive sine u, sine v. So that means those cancel out. And then I have cos u, cos v, cos u, cos v. Those are like terms, right? And each of their coefficients is a 1. We don't write it, but that's what it is. So I have 2 cosine u, cosine v, and bam, we're done. There's the right-hand side. All right, so hopefully you enjoy working on your homework for section 5.2.